Well, I think, uh, uh, thank you for coming to us and for uh, bringing uh, this wonderful, miraculous uh, icon. It's wonderful to be here on this special day. Thank you. The icon has visited Washington before and our cathedral, but each visit is special. And so I'm happy to be here. Thank you. All of us more or less know about the many centuries uh, history of uh, this uh, icon. And I would like to ask you about your experience. You are our custodian of uh, this icon uh, during many years already. Uh, how do you feel? What, what is this experience uh, to be with such great relic, not only for Russia, but for the whole Orthodox world? In December of 2010, I was given the obedience from our Synod of Bishops to accompany the Kursk icon on its travels. The icon is kept in our Synod in New York, in Manhattan. There the cathedral is dedicated to the Kursk icon. And it has been there since 1958. The Kursk icon came to America in 1951, but now is kept at our cathedral on Park Avenue. And this has been since 1958. We sometimes say that the Kursk icon is constantly in motion. This because it travels and visits our diocese, our parishes, our parishioners, our sick, our elderly all over the world. This is a great blessing. So for me, it is a joy to have such a wonderful obedience. But I want to express and underline the fact that I am not alone. The other bishops the clergy, the faithful, we are all caretakers of the Kursk icon. I might help organize the schedule, travel with the holy image to visit another diocese or a parish, but everyone participates. So I'm not alone here, but we all are caretakers of this holy image. There's joy, there's a sense of humility, and a sense of uh, fear, because we truly feel the presence of the Theotokos when we stand and pray to the Kursk icon. How does it to be with, uh, with uh, this uh, uh, icon? Because uh, Saint uh, Seraphim of Sarov prayed uh, before this, uh, in front of this icon, Saint uh, John of Shanghai, uh, many other uh, saints, uh, as I know, Kutuzov uh, uh, prayed uh, in front of this icon before the um, uh, Battle of uh, uh, Borodino, many other famous, uh, famous and not famous people. Are you, are you afraid to be with... Uh, to be well, near this icon. Uh, there are mixed feelings, but no, there is a sense of joy and peace. Uh, how can we be afraid in the presence of the Mother of God? And as you just mentioned, to think about Saint Seraphim of Sorov as a boy praying before the icon, our Russian czars and tsarinas, our ancestors, our hierarchs, it's quite humbling, but not nothing so fearful. Uh, what does this icon mean for the Russian diaspora, for the Ru Russian people uh, who live uh, outside of uh, Russia? Uh, the Kursk icon is very special and dear to the Russian people in the diaspora. It is referred to as our Adzigitria, or the one that leads the way, the path. The Kursk icon we know left Russia in November of 1920. It was in Crimea, the last part of the free Russian land, and it left with the White Army and our hierarchs and our faithful. And since then, it has traveled throughout Europe, and as I mentioned earlier, in 1951, from Geneva, was brought to America. 
The Russian people were scattered all over the world. There was the revolution, the Bolsheviks, difficult times, and they were forced to leave Russia, forced to go into exile into this strange new world that was foreign to them. They didn't know the languages of the local countries, maybe the customs, traditions. They were without work, very difficult times. Then there was the war. People were displaced. But no matter where the Russian people were in the diaspora, they had each other, they had their faith, and they also knew that with them was the Kursk icon. It had left to guide them to salvation, to freedom of faith, and to protect them. So, of course, to this day, it is very dear to the Russian diaspora. All icons are special. All icons are holy. But in particular, the Kursk icon, I think it is safe to say, has a special meaning to the Russian people in the diaspora. But now, today, I would even go so far as to say that it is special to all Orthodox Christians because we have our Serbian brothers and sisters coming to pray before the icon. We have people of the Antiochian church, people from the Greek church, many people that are not Orthodox come to the faith by seeing and praying to this image. Uh, in 2007, uh, the church in Moscow and the uh, church outside of Russia uh, have uh, reunified. Uh, and in two, after that, in 2009, uh, the Kursk icon, for the first time in many decades, uh, uh, came uh, to Russia and you uh, were accompanied uh, it, uh, uh, during uh, this uh, trip. Uh, can you share your... Uh, your memories uh, about uh, about this historic event? As I just mentioned, the Kursk icon left Russia in November of 1920. And in September 2009, the icon for the first time returned to Russia. All those years it was in New York and visiting our parishes all over the world. But traveling to Russia uh, was not possible yet. And so, with the blessing of our Synod of Bishops, with the blessing of the Patriarch, the icon in September of 2009 visited Moscow and then Kursk. I want to mention that in 2007, as you mentioned, there was the joyous reunification of the Russian Church. The two parts of the whole Church came together. That was in May. After the celebrations and services in Moscow, Metropolitan Lars and a small delegation traveled to Kursk and then to Kiev. While we were in Kursk, uh, we visited also the Kursk Hermitage. This is the site of the monastery that was uh, then closed and destroyed, but in the 90s was given back to the church and they were rebuilding the monastic life and the church is there. The chapel and the well, which is considered to be the site of the location where the icon was found, is there. There was a beautiful cathedral, the main church of the monastery, dedicated to the birth of the Theotokos. This was destroyed during those terrible times. Visiting the Kursk Hermitage in 2007, uh, the hierarchy, the monastics, the clergy, the faithful were asking about the Kursk icon visiting Russia and, of course, Kursk. Udukolaris, I remember, said very vividly that continue your struggles here, proclaim the faith, and when the church, the cathedral is rebuilt, I am sure the Kursk icon will visit. And so two years later, in September of 2009, the cathedral at the Kursk Hermitage, dedicated to the birth of the Theotokos, was standing, rebuilt. And the icon visited Moscow in September, and then from Moscow to Kursk and the Kursk Hermitage. And in the presence of the holy image, the cathedral in the Hermitage was fully consecrated by the Patriarch and our Metropolitan Hilarion, 
the first hierarch of the church abroad. I was one of a large delegation on that trip. We had members from our synod of bishops. We had our priests, our deacons with us, uh, servers. I believe 30, 35 people altogether traveling on this historic pilgrimage with our Adzigitria to Russia. Of course, there's a sense of joy, a uh, sense of trepidation. But being in Moscow those days and then in Kursk, seeing the faithful coming to venerate in tens of thousands, it was quite humbling and gave me personally more of an understanding of truly what a holy relic we have here with us in America. And what did you understand at that time? That the truly we are blessed that as Orthodox Christians, God is with us. We are not alone. And it is vivid. The Kursk icon is with us. The Mother of God never left us. And I understood myself more of the history of the icon, but I understood more of why we truly need the icon and other saints and relics with us outside of Russia, uh, because there is much calamity. We are not in an Orthodox country in America, but having such images, having such holy objects, makes you feel at peace and helps you strengthen your faith. Uh, you mentioned that the United States uh, is not an uh, Orthodox country as uh, many other countries in Europe where, where Russians uh, uh, live uh, now. Uh, what, what do you think? Uh, is it difficult to be Orthodox in, uh, in the United States now? If you want to be Orthodox, you want to proclaim yourself, I do not think it is difficult. There are many temptations. We simply become lazy. But we have to speak our faith, and we have to act as Orthodox Christians. Um, if we are proud of our faith, and we are strong, and we attend the church services, we speak about our faith, we cross ourselves in public, yes, we keep the fasts, I think it is easy to be Orthodox. We do not, we not need be scared uh, to be proud of our faith. And you don't uh, think uh, that uh, Orthodox people have some difficulties uh, in the United States because other people simply don't understand? Uh, well, there's that reason. People might not understand. There simply could be scheduling conflicts. Yes, we know that we adhere to the old calendar, the Julian calendar, which has our holidays and our fasting periods and our Paschal cycle. The Western civilization lives according to the Gregorian calendar. Fasting periods might be difficult to follow, certain holidays. Now there are many events, activities scheduled for Saturday evening or Sunday, which of course is a temptation to miss church services, to stray away from that which is needful. But here we are given free will. We have the choice to make, and that is up to us, through the help of the Theotokos, to make the right decision. Uh, I'm sure that you met many Americans who came, not, not Americans, not Orthodox uh, uh, people who uh, didn't know about Orthodoxy, about Russia, and who came occasionally maybe to this uh, uh, icon. Uh, uh, what, uh, did, did they... Uh, uh, tell you some their impressions uh, about uh, what what what, uh, uh, what did they feel from this uh, icon? I I've heard people, as you mentioned, well Americans, uh, say something as simple as this is a beautiful object, or I feel at peace, or we can go further, and I have had people come tell me that when I came to your church. I saw this icon, and I then looked for the true faith and eventually found the Orthodox faith and now uh, am baptized and chrismated. So there are wonderful accounts of people finding the true light by the presence and prayer of the Kursk icon. Thanks God 
now uh, the icon each year comes to uh, Russia to specifically to Kursk uh, each year and I know that people abroad here sometimes afraid that it will stay uh, 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 there uh, f uh, forever. So uh, is there some agreement between uh, uh, Moscow Patriarchate and uh, uh, the Russian Orthodox Church outside, uh, of Ra outside Russia uh, about uh, uh, the specific place where, where uh, the icon will be uh, cons uh, constantly. Do does it mean that uh, it will stay uh, abroad uh, for forever or almost uh, forever, or it will return to, to Russia? As we already talked about the first visit in 2009 of the Kursk icon to Russia, yes, it has been traveling every year with the blessing of our synod and the blessing of the Moscow Patriarchate to Kursk in September and possibly one other diocese if there is an invitation. For example, the icon has visited Yekaterinburg, Saransk, Perm, Orenburg, all these wonderful places in Russia outside of Kursk. We have to understand and acknowledge that the icon left Russia with the Russian people and it found its home first in Serbia, and we are grateful to our Serbian brothers and sisters for giving a home to the Kursk icon in those first very difficult years. The icon traveled throughout Europe and came to America in 1951, as I mentioned, and it came to its new home, the Synod of Bishops, in 1958, the cathedrals dedicated to the icon. God has blessed the church abroad to be the caretaker of the Kursk icon. But it is our duty, it is our mission, to share the icon with the Orthodox world. That is our obedience. That is how I understand uh, this now situation. I'm sure that you were a witness of many miracle stories uh, related uh, to this uh, icon. Uh, because thousand 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 even maybe millions of people uh, come uh, come uh, uh, to, uh, to the icon so can you share some of these uh, maybe stories maybe uh, impressions experience it is always wonderful uh, to pray and serve my leben to the icon for those that come and ask for these prayers they might be sick they might be lonely they might be confused, but they know they need help from the Mother of God. And truly, there are miracles. Some things are quite personal, and I wouldn't want to share so many personal things. However, I do attest to the fact that just recently, a young lady wrote from Russia, and she mentioned that she and her husband wanted to start a family, and there were some problems she learned of the Kursk icon coming to her city and volunteered to help in the church those days and clean, maybe bring flowers. But she was in the presence of the Kursk icon for a week. And in the letter, she continued to write that after you left and returned to America with the Kursk icon, the next day, I learned that my husband and I were expecting a child. And she attributes this miracle to the Kursk icon and the prayers of the Theotokos. People have been healed from sicknesses, something also which is not a simple thing, but people maybe that need to establish themselves with work or a situation in their personal lives. After a prayer to the Kursk icon, they later come back and say, Dear Vladika, everything is fine. And it's better than I had even expected. So truly, if we pray with a pure heart, a clean mind, and accept what God will give us, I think we will find we have all we need for salvation and joy in our Orthodox lives. Uh, do you have uh, your own personal stories uh, related to uh, uh, to this uh, icon which you can share with us? Again, there are many, many special things. I feel blessed 
I feel very humble. One of the wonderful things uh, truly that I enjoy, if that's the proper way to say, when the icon is not traveling and in the synod, uh, sometimes we say that the icon is home in New York. During the week, we have daily liturgy in our St. Sergius Chapel and the Vespers and Matin services in the evening. When possible, uh, I bring the icon to the daily services. There may be a few people in church, anywhere from 10 to 20. And truly, it's a blessing to see the icon at these simple but yet profound services. During the day, the icon is never left in church or alone. It is either with the Metropolitan or myself or one of the priests in the Synod. And so many times I'll be working in my office and I'll have the Kursk icon right next to me on a small table with a lampada. And for me, that's very special because I can do my work, uh, work on my correspondence, uh, prepare letters for the Metropolitan or our Synod, and the Kursk icon is right next to me. And maybe a few weeks earlier, it was in a cathedral in Kursk where tens of thousands of people were lined in the streets praying, singing the Akafist, just to have a few seconds to venerate the Kursk icon. So for me, those moments are very humbling and truly uh, very special. That's something I could share with you. The major question for me, how do you feel how this icon changed you? How it changed me? Yes. Well, I, I pray I became a better Christian. I became a better person and I became more humble and I became more helpful to people. I think these are things we have to work on. I can't say how I've changed, but I do hope it's for the better. If I may ask, uh, what uh, Russians here, Russian Orthodox here, feels uh, about uh, the autocephaly, about Constantinople, let's say, unfriendly, maybe, uh, uh, moves uh, with regard to this? Well, these are difficult times. and sad times. However, we have to be steadfast and as the Russian church and as our church abroad has stated, I believe uh, quite distinctly that we are supporting Metropolitan Anufri and the Ukrainian church. We have to defend the truth. We have to act canonically. And if another church is not doing so, well, there will be differences and sadly, uh, separation. So for now, we are praying to Almighty God. We are supporting, again, the true church in the Ukrainian lands and our dear brother, Vodika Metropolitan Anufri, who as a bishop and archbishop and even metropolitan uh, visited America and served at our Synod Cathedral, at our churches in Lakewood, here in Washington, and even other Orthodox churches throughout America. So truly, he is our brother in Christ, and we need to help them, to encourage them, and again, to stand for the truth. Yes, there will be difficulties with some of our brothers and sisters in the other jurisdictions, but again, we cannot stray away from the truth and that which is canonical. Thank you. Maybe you also want to tell something about uh, the icon, uh, which I didn't ask. Thank you for this interview. Um, one thing maybe I can say is that uh, this is how the icon left Russia in 1920. What I mean is this was the metal covering, or riza, as we say in Russia, that was on the holy icon. These cloth covers... Uh, they appeared uh, again abroad. Our faithful uh, would sew such beautiful uh, covers and adorn the icon with it as a gift, as a blessing. This one in particular uh, is from Jerusalem, from our nuns uh, that are praying and struggling on the Mount of Olives at the Holy Ascension Convent. So it's very special that uh, the icon is from Russia. It travels all over the world, 
but yet there's a piece of Jerusalem also with it. The icon and the covers uh, specifically, I received a new one now in Russia from uh, the Kursk Hermitage as a gift. So maybe in December, the Metropolitan, if he blesses, will remove this cover and will put the new one on uh, about a new cover once a year, which blesses the icon and of course beautifies it. But sometimes people don't realize that these, they do change. And there are blessings from Jerusalem or now Russia or other faithful uh, that want to somehow praise and give thanks to the Theotokos. Thank you.